everyone, it's Fuchsia here with another video. Today is going to be a little bit unboxing, a little bit vlog, because it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video. I know I have been in finals, the wonderful, wonderful grad school experience. I did so well in my classes this semester though. I'm really excited. My grades on all my projects all semester long and all my classes were perfect, but I just finished those the other day. So now I have time to make videos <laughs> unlike the last couple of weeks. Today I wanted to give a couple updates on my life. As I said, uh, grad school and everything. And also we're going to look at a few books that I've recently obtained, including this month's Witches Box book subscription, which I'm really, really excited about. We're going to talk about that. And also the Witchy One subscription box that I just got last night. I haven't opened it and I'm really excited. It was actually supposed to be delivered and it just disappeared from the tracking. Like, post office was like, it's getting delivered today. And then they were like, oh no, we've never heard of that before. It's still in New Mexico where we scanned it the previous week. So it finally showed up last night and I was like, yay, I don't have to call and complain and cry because that's what happens when I have to talk to any type of customer service. So we've got that here to look at in just a bit. As for the rest of my current life, in addition to grad school, I finally opened my candle shop. So link down below, I have an Etsy shop where I have some candles, some fancy candles inspired by different crystals, aquamarine, amethyst. I have a rose quartz one and they do have actual like rose quartz chips in them and stuff. And, uh, you know, I have my regular, like, chime candles and tea light candles and negativity reversals um, in that shop as well if you need some of your, you know, regular witchy stock. In addition, since I am free from finals in school for the next month, I have started volunteering at my local animal shelter. I actually had my first on-site volunteer shift today. I am really, really excited. I volunteered with them pre-pandemic, but I'm really excited to have, like, puppies in my life again. So if you don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I will be posting so many adorable puppies and kittens from the shelter on those two sites. So, again, all the links for everywhere that I'm on the internet are down below. So... Let's talk about books. You know me. I love to talk about books. I don't have a huge book haul to talk about today, but, you know, I've got some. I have been so busy with schoolwork that I haven't really been um, buying a lot of books or a lot of craft stuff or anything. October was so, so busy between, um, like, doing everything for the channel and doing things for offbeats for Halloween and, you know, my friends just generally in the Halloween spirit and, like, the witchcraft shop had a ton of things going on for October that it was so, so busy and nonstop and I loved it, but I definitely crashed after October 31st. So I took a couple of weeks off, but then I really went through a weird phase where I just kind of felt like a void, like not really disconnected from my magic, but disconnected with how to connect with it, if that makes sense. I was just like, I don't, I want to do something, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it was just like really hard for me to get back into that. I have not been like reading tarot as much as I usually do at all. Like, usually, you know, pull a daily card and think about it throughout the day. Do my weekly spread. Um, do just, like, general inquiries and stuff. And I haven't been, like, feeling connected to any of my tarot decks, but also not really feeling like I needed insight in something in particular. So it's been, like, a weird transition period between Samhain and now, and I'm 
totally going to blame school for part of that. But thankfully, the answer came in this month's Witches box. These two books came in this month's subscription box, and I'm really, really excited. First of all, so So Witchy by Rachel Henderson. I have been looking at this for months and waffling on getting it. She is actually a local Chicago author, and she came to the shop and did a whole workshop uh, a couple months ago, and I was just like, oh, I want to get it, but maybe maybe not right now. So I have just been like not getting it. I know I should have, but I was just, you know, busy with so many Halloween crafts and everything that I just, you know, I just didn't. So I was really excited to see this show up in the box, especially since I didn't buy it. So I don't have two copies now. Although if that ever happens, I think I'm just, you know, going to do a giveaway for the second copy because I do have a lot of books. There have already been books that I've gotten a second copy through the box. So it's inevitable that it'll happen again, I'm sure. But I also got Fiber Magic, which is um, really exciting. I wanted to talk about these two first for their book content, but also I realized shortly, like shortly before getting these in the mail, I mean like the day before getting these in the mail, I have always approached my witchcraft as crafts. Obviously, I make my own candles, but more than that, like, just my knitting is my witchcraft. I was actually working on knitting an altar cloth, and I put it aside, so clearly I was not thinking. I did finish it. I finished it the other day. It's all um, blocked and everything. It's just a plain baby pink altar cloth, but it's just for my Aphrodite altar for winter. Um, nice and warm and um, pink. But I did finally finish it. When I saw these in the mail, I was just like, obviously, that's what's missing. I had been doing so much, and then I put it all down, and not only did I feel like a disconnect from my magic when I put it all down in a way to connect to my magic, but just felt really kind of lost in general. Like, what am I doing? I've been going through this thing where I feel like I'm not doing anything with my life because I'm not, you know, I'm not working a full-time job. I'm not going to job every day. I'm not really doing anything on a regular, like, set schedule, day-to-day basis because I'm in grad school, but it's online courses. <laughs> it's absolute Capricorn stuff, but I feel like I'm not doing anything with my life because I'm not actively doing things, even though I am in grad school for my dream job and putting a lot of work into that. But Capricorn, I have to be constantly busy all the time and being productive and working towards my goals at all times. So let's get back to our crafts. When Rachel came to the shop and talked about her book, I was talking to her because I was like, I saw the book. And I do hand sewing, but I don't have a sewing machine. I'd been waffling on getting a sewing machine for a couple of years, but I don't have a sewing machine, so I don't know, like, if I should bother getting the book. And it's actually, a lot of the things will say if they, ha if they require a sewing machine or not, and a lot of things can be hand sewn in here, so yay! But also, this came in the mail, and I went out and bought a sewing machine. Not a complete impulse purchase. I had been thinking about it for a while. Actually, I had been thinking about it for a couple of years. And right when I was finally about to like go and buy a sewing machine and just buy the bullet, the pandemic happened. And you know what happened with the pandemic? Everyone was making masks. And that meant everyone was buying sewing machines to make masks. And that meant either sewing machines were sold out or they were very expensive. So I did not get a sewing machine when I first thought of it. So two years later, I finally got a sewing machine. I'm really excited. I've been sewing. Um, well, I've actually been making masks. <laughs> um, I just got it a couple days ago. I am re-familiarizing myself with how to use a sewing machine because it's been about 10 years since I used one. And um, I'm starting small. I'm putting pockets in all my skirts. That's that's a fun thing. But I'm really looking forward to like 
getting into some of the things here. I've flipped through it, obviously. I've looked at a lot of the things and just kind of want to do it all. So fiber magic, I am all about, obviously, I am a knitter, but that's the thing. This is about crochet. I don't know much crochet. I learned crocheting long, long before I learned knitting, but I never like really like picked it up. And I know the basics, but not really anything beyond that. I might learn. I might learn. But there's a whole section, like, there's all st stuff about, like, yarn magic in general and knots and stuff, which I'm really excited about. I have uh, the knot magic book that I showed a few videos before. Or I might just take some of these, like, look at this hat. I might just take this and make it into a knitting pattern. I might do that. But there's also just like so much information in here about yarn magic and I'm really excited for that. But I have to face reality. Capricorn. I will probably learn how to crochet properly because of this book. I'm just saying. I know me. I know I can't half-ass anything, especially when it comes to creative stuff and crafts. Like, I really can't. I'm really excited about those books, about leaning more into my crafting magic, and it's just going to have so much of that on this channel once I get it all set up to actually record. I can do, like, my little desk stuff, but, like, the sewing stuff needs to be done elsewhere. I'll include a whole look at this in January's vlog, but this is my new sewing machine and my new crafting station, and I'm so excited to have this space for this. And there's Ginny eating her dinner a little late, but I'm so excited about this, and I will record a video when it's not the middle of the night. But yes, this is my new sewing machine, and I'm so excited to work on it. I'm gonna have a lot more crafting stuff on this channel because we are all about the witch crafting here. I'm really excited about that and to see where sewing takes me. Every year I try to lean really heavily into one specific craft, actual craft, not witchcraft, although that also, yes, but every year I try to lean into one specific craft and really kind of master that a lot more. And so, obviously, this coming year is going to be sewing. And I have made things before. <laughs> I have sewn things before. I have made my own skirts. I even made an amazing cloak once. And I really enjoy it, but it's been, like, ten years. So I want to get more into, like, making my own stuff and see where that le leads us. And I'm hoping by the end of next year I will be... Um, confident enough and skilled enough to actually make like my own like really nice dress not really really fancy or anything but just like a nice dress so that's my that's my goal for this coming year and I have Rachel Henderson to thank for that <laughs> So those were the two books that came in this month's Witches Book Box. I'm really, really excited about them. And then we have some other books that came elsewhere, actually. These are all from the Witchcraft Shop. I'm really excited about them, including, first of all, this book, Death's Head. It is actually written by one of the owners of the shop, um, Blake Malloway. It actually does not have a page on Goodreads yet, so I am a Goodreads librarian because I'm me, <laughs> and I um, am probably going to have to make the page for it, but it's like a legit book. It's got like an ISBN and everything. Like, it's very exciting, but it's this little book about uh, using skulls in your witchcraft, and I'm really excited for it. I started reading it the other day and it's great. The author runs a lot, a lot of workshops at the shop and definitely knows his stuff. So I'm really, really excited for this one. So I picked that up the other day. I also picked up Llewellyn's Little Book of Unicorns. This was absolutely an impulse, but I couldn't resist it. Look. Look, it just, it's all about unicorn magic. Like, like how? And it's pink on the edges. It's 
kind of focus. It's just a little book of unicorns. I'm just really excited for it. And it's just like, the cover's so pretty. This came about because of the next book. I saw it on the shelf next to the other book. And I was like, well, I'm already buying one book because it's pretty. So why not buy another book because it's pretty? I haven't actually started reading it yet, but like, like look at uh, my aesthetic. My aesthetic. The last book that I'm going to talk about today is The Iliad and the Odyssey. First of all, gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's got gold gilded edges and it's just it's just pretty it's got it's got like one of those one of those bookmarks built in i love it i love it i'm really excited that this in particular is so pretty because i was going to buy a copy of the iliad and the odyssey it's something i've been thinking about wanting to reread recently because I definitely need to reread it from an actual, like, pagan standpoint, uh, viewpoint, not an academic one, which is the last time I read it. I was a literature major in college. My very first semester of college, I took a class on Greek and Roman mythology. The professor, I'm going to go to my grave complaining about this, I'm pretty sure, because I, 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 I bring it up a lot. But the professor was like, well, the Greeks didn't actually believe in these gods that they wrote about in the Iliad and the Odyssey. They were just, you know, myths. Yeah, they didn't believe in the gods that they built temples to. Lies my teachers told me. But it was my first semester of college, and I'm like 18 year old me from the woods of Massachusetts, and like I'm smart, but like I'm not worldly. At least 18 year old me was not. And I'm just like also, you know, undiagnosed anxiety, so I'm not gonna speak up in class. So I was like, I can't argue with the professor. Clearly, like, she's the one teaching the class. She knows more about this than I do. Yeah. Anyway, here we have the Iliad and the Odyssey. And I'm excited to read it from a pagan perspective. And this is actually something I'm really excited about because I decided that I'm going to stream reading it. We're going to have a little story time with fuchsia on my stream links down below of course it's not just going to be like me sitting there reading like an audiobook we're going to have discussions and we're going to talk about the greek gods and goddesses and how they influence modern day paganism and like all all this stuff and i'm really excited so um come join me on twitch until altair launches in the early 2022, once Altera launches, I will be streaming there all the time instead of Twitch. But in the meantime, join me on Twitch and we'll, we'll read some Iliad and Odyssey. Maybe just the Iliad. Maybe just the Odyssey. I don't know. But I'm really excited about this. God, I'm such a nerd. But also just like, it's so pretty. Like, mean, look at this. Oh, I lied. We're t talking about one more book or really not not one book, but I have one book in my hand here. So our next installment of the um, Magic Systems in Fantasy Books series will be on Discworld. I'm really, really excited. But it's going to be a while because it's been so long since I read the witches books in Discworld that I wanted to give them a full reread instead of just trying to go by memory because it's been almost 10 years since I read these now. No, eight, seven or eight years. It hasn't been, has it been 10 years? God, I'm getting old. I just wanted to give them like a fresh reread so I can talk about stuff. And I'm so excited about this because I, this is the third witch's book. I have just started this one, but the first two, like reading them, I was just like, yes, I would not have thought about this. So 
making mental notes. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Terry Pratchett, amazing. By the way, Discworld, amazing. If you haven't read Discworld, just in general, please read Discworld. But we'll talk about all that probably, hopefully, next month. Hopefully, I will get through the rest of them now that finals are over. I will get through the rest of them and um, be able to make that video in January. But I'm really excited. I love... I love these books so much. All that, I think I've covered everything. All that, let's take a look at this month's Witchy One box. I did not do an unboxing for last month's, uh, just because with everything going on, I didn't. It was really nice, <laughs> but um, nothing that made me want to like make a video afterwards. It was a very nice box, but... Let's take a look at this one. First off, like, I love this box. Look at this. I love it. We've got our little paper that tells us what things are. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Baggy number one. Ooh. We've got this really pretty necklace. Look at this. Oh, it's so nice. I love it. It's the Celtic cross. And it actually is kind of like the perfect length. It is the perfect length. Look. Look. It hangs down pretty much exactly where my badger claw hangs down. Costume change. And we've got bag number two. It's a little ring. A little snake ring. I actually want to wear more rings, um, so, uh, this is going to make me feel really fancy. And then, in the box, look at this. Look at this rainbow iridescent spoon. And it's got little leaves on the edge. I've been saying, I don't know if this is, like the intended purpose, but I have been saying to myself, I've been drinking a lot more tea again, um, first because of my inability to sleep at a normal schedule, because I'm currently going to bed at like five, six o'clock in the morning, but my tea helps me sleep at least, and also it just, uh, it's colder weather, you want to cozy up with some tea, but I've been saying like, I need to get a spoon specifically for my tea, and here we are! It's actually really funny, too, because I was looking at some scissors, some craft scissors for, uh, fabric scissors for my sewing I was looking at, and they are exactly, like, rainbow iridescent like this, so, um, I might have scissors that match my teaspoon? Is that, is that weird? But, like, it's me, rainbow iridescent, just comes with a package. We've got a teaspoon with a really cool, with really cool leaves on it. And I, I really like the leaves on the edge. So dainty. And we have this month's tea, which is chai, a classic chai. Not much to say about that. Just, chai's really good. I like it. One more thing. Actually, looks like two more things. Ooh, it's a selenite heart. Nice. I've actually wanted to get one of these. I have selenite in so many different forms. I have two different unicorn horns of selenite, and then I have, like, you know, the selenite sticks, and I have, like, t selenite tower and everything. I can always use more selenite. So, um, I'm, I'm excited. Plus, this is just, like, really pretty, and it has, like, just such nice, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but it has, like, such perfect banding, just, like, down, and it's really nice. It's really nice. I'm excited for that. And then, the last, last thing in the box. Hi, Felix! Aw, couldn't get her on the camera. Ooh, incense. They smell so nice. Ooh. I am no good at, like, placing a lot of scents, identifying a lot of scents, so I'm no help with this. We're definitely going to have to read it, but, um, 
but it smells really nice. And also, I just, like, I know this is, like, it doesn't really matter, but, like, just can we appreciate, like, the solid blackness of these incense cones? Like, like, they are just, I don't know, they're just, like, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Such a weird thing to focus on for incense. I don't know, but I'm used to them being like that brown grainy color. We have Celtic knot necklace. We had visions of elvish beauty. That is very true. Very true. In Norse mythology and Norse paganism, the light elves who lived in Elfium with their god and lord called Frey were beautiful, graceful, and magical fairy folk. The Elfimer were said to be fairer than the sun to look upon. May you embody the grace of these creatures as you wear this necklace. I think it's going to take a lot more than a necklace for me to embody grace of any kind, but we'll try. And then we have the serpent ring. The wand within, as we like to call it. The serpent is a long-standing symbol of the dormant Kundalini. Kundalini? Kundalini. Said to lay at the base of our spine. Our cheek... Our Key chakra points resonate along the spine and play an integral part in our ability to create, manifest, or do spell work. We engage these points of energy to varying degrees as we create. May this ring bring your attention to the immeasurable pool of creative force within your reach. Call upon your creative force to rise with more and more vigor up through your chakras, activating and amplifying their own directive powers. Our leaf spoon... As our focus lingered on elvish beauty this month, these luminous spoons drew in our attention. A bit of beauty and shimmer for your morning ritual. Whether you're scooping tea leaves or stirring coffee, integrating beauty always adds to the alchemy of the day. Remember to cast your best spells by starting your day off with as much beauty, elevated vision, and joy that you may. I love that. Love that. Um... For me, like, drinking tea in the morning is very much, like, a ritual. Um, I just, like, I like to get my tea, and it's always my positivity. Um, it's actually not called that. It's called, like, positive energy. And, like, Tazo, you really missed an opportunity there. But, um, but I drink my positivity with, um, with my, like, book that I'm reading in the morning and um and then i do my meditation and yoga if i'm being really really ambitious but it's just like it's such like a good morning ritual when i actually do it and um i like to bring some a little more beauty in i love it selenite heart merely looking upon the opaque shimmer to the selenite stone brings feelings of clarity and purification it's true it's true as we delve deep to discover what we truly desire to bring forth, we may encounter clouded vision or indecisiveness. May the selenite heart work as a clearing agent, facilitating authentic visions to unfold effortlessly. Selenite. Pretty. Standard. We know the drill with selenite. Hand-dipped jasmine oil cones. That's the incense jasmine. The scent of jasmine is sensual, floral, and exotic. Light a cone, settle into your altar space or magical dwelling, and tune into visions that bring about feelings of passion and fulfillment. Your visions are always within reach. It begins with a deep, rich feeling. The feeling within you is the seed you're planting, so feel your vision deeply. I love this month's box. I love it so much. Because I am not on, like, a steady income and only have school money and also like any sales I make from my candles which I have actually been selling my candles um so thank you to people who have bought those but I digress so because of my income situation my voluntary income situation to be fair but because of my income situation I was only going to subscribe to this box for three months give it a three-month trial and then see I have loved this I have loved this box so much. This one, if they wanted to hook me on the third box, they hooked me on the third box. <laughs> so I'm really excited. Oh my God. I'm so excited for this. I have just absolutely loved this box and I'm going to continue my subscription with it. So goodbye, money. 
But that is it for today's video. I just am looking forward to just like really just getting back into my crafts and sharing all of that with you. I also have so many plans for the channel that I have been holding off on to start with the new year. So some of those will be rolling out soon um, come January. So keep an eye out for those. I'm really excited. If you want to see more of Gores, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more witchcrafty content in your subscription box if YouTube algorithm favors me. But if you want to help the YouTube algorithm favor me, a like and a comment on this video goes such a long way in helping the channel grow and getting my video out to subscription boxes because sometimes YouTube doesn't like to do that to small creators. I will have another tarot video coming soon because I have so many that I have not finished the videos for. I'm working on it. But other than that, I will just have our regular witchy crafting content coming forward and also some other stuff coming in the new year. So keep an eye out. And in the meantime, have a wonderful, magical day. Bye. So let's see. So we have a, we have a Felix. Meow. Meow. Can you see her? She's just a black void. <laughs>